Hi there, I bought something from China and I give you the chance to find out what it could be. On the back side there are water in and outlets for cooling and a people switch, 40 amps, which is a little bit optimistic in my opinion. There is also a water pump in the package, that's this one here. It doesn't look too bad, does its job. Because they decided not to use a plastic bag, some styrofoam is sticking on the handle there and it's also inside the machine everywhere. And here you can finally see what it is, it's an inducation heater. Of course it's an induction heater, that's a typo there. And what it does is pretty simple, it uses AC current that runs through this coil here to heat up this uh, crucible here that is made from um, graphite. In fact you can heat up every uh, thing that is uh, metallic or conductive, so it would eventually heat my finger too. The output power here depends on what you use inside this coil, so with the crucible it's about 2300 watts. And uh, if you just uh, put a screwdriver in, it's probably 100, 200 watts, not very effective. The inside of the machine is pretty, let's say, surprising. They cut a few corners here. For example, the power supply is a used power supply. You can clearly see all the scratches. It's an Emerson. R48, so it's a 48 volt, 3200 watt power supply. I don't know where that comes from. And the most surprising part is this little wall power supply they just soldered into the board. So in fact the board has uh, soldering spots where this fits and it's just hanging there. It's not supported by these uh, brackets there these resistors, it's just hanging freely. On the other side there is a barrel plug that goes into a receptacle on the board. I guess the board, you can buy the board separately and you use the power supply. So this is the uh, 230 volt uh, supply that goes to this power supply and I'm not sure, but I think the insulation distance here is a little bit too small for 230 volt. Also the cable are very thin. And if you wonder where the power transistors are, they are underneath the board and they are soldered di directly to these copper tubes here. Uh, that's good for cooling because there is water flowing through these tubes. but Every time when this tube moves somehow, uh, I don't know how long this will uh, work here until the solder breaks and transistor comes off and um, I think this is not built to run for a very long time. But at the moment it works and that's all I need. By the way, the manual says you need two wrenches to uh, connect this coil and the reason is obvious um, the internal tube uh, should not move so you use one uh, wrench to stabilize the internal tube and then you turn the outer nut until everything is watertight. The red and the blue wire here are coming from the power supply they have the 48 volts on it and the power supply can deliver up to 60 amps. So you see there are two screw terminals, they only used one. Maybe it would be better to use two wires in parallel for that much current. And here is a pressure sensor, so the unit won't turn on if you don't use the uh, water pump or if the water pump is off. And now it's time to measure the electrical properties. Uh, by the way, these crocodile clips get hot because of the induction. We have 380 volt peak peak at 50 kilohertz. That's a pretty high voltage, uh, especially if it's on, it comes from a 
only 48 volts. But that's what resonators do when coils and capacitors are in the right dimensions and you hit it with the right frequency. Voltages go crazy. Now we want to see how long it takes to heat up this crucible. Uh, I didn't start at room temperature, so you may add 30 seconds before this clip. And uh, I will also not wait until uh, gold melts. Uh, by the way, there is no gold inside the crucible right now. That's some leftovers, some borax. And you see it heats up pretty quickly. We have now about a minute or so from room temperature. And uh, until the gold melts, you may add another one or two minutes, but it's really a quick uh, heater here. So in about five minutes, you have your little bit of gold molten and everything else melts. Of course, maybe a little bit earlier if the melting point is lower. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons. It's easy to use. You turn it on, you push the button, it starts when the water pump runs. Uh, it's extremely quick, so you can melt metals in a couple of minutes. It is not too expensive. It cost me $450 and that's including the shipping and because this is a relatively heavy unit, so shipping was about $150 alone. Uh, the cons, you have seen this strange interior design with the uh, transistors soldered to the copper pipes with this uh, wall uh, power supply internal. Uh, I'm also not sure if any of this machine is too any uh, safety codes, for example, this tiny little um, connector for 230 volts, I don't know, and also thin wires, extra insulation, which is not uh, existing. Then what bothers me most is the styrofoam that was everywhere, especially uh, that was sticking uh, to the grip, to the handle, because this is made of soft uh, plastic and it has a lot of softener in it and this will also dissolve the styrofoam and I'm pretty sure I will never get that away from that handle. Uh, the same happened to the mains cable. This is also a pretty soft cable. It's uh, good, it's made of copper, it has the right thickness but uh, they should add a, a plastic bag for these parts. Um, it's probably not very durable, so because of this copper and uh, transistor soldering thing. But hey, it works as long as it works and maybe it's at least repairable. And at the end, because they used uh, used parts, for example this large power supply, I mean these power supplies, if they are new, they certainly cost thousand or even more dollars. So I'm not against using used parts, but then the price is a little bit high. Okay, you can decide for yourself if you want one of these. It works, it does its job, so if you're satisfied with that, then okay, buy one. Thanks for watching.